good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome, welcome, welcome to PTP OG, Practicing the Presence of God. Pastor Micah Hayes back with you, and I hope you're doing well. I trust that things are going well for you, where you are. How's everything in your life? <laughs> it is Monday. It's Monday. Yes, it's it's a Monday. It's a Monday. <laughs> and we all know how Mondays are. Mondays can kind of drag you a little bit, right? But God is good anyhow. Thank you. Thank you for being with us today. I praise God for your presence with us this morning. It's a beautiful day today, even though it's gloomy outside, it's still beautiful. We had a wonderful weekend. I trust you had a good weekend and that things are running uh, rather smoothly in your life today. Listen, let's go to the word of God. It's found in the book of Proverbs. Our text for the day is the book of Proverbs, uh, chapter 29. And we are looking at verse number six. <clears throat> You know, I used to do uh, uh, one of my early pastorates. I used to do this thing called the text for the day. I did it on uh, it was on it was on Facebook too. Yeah, it was on Facebook too. And what I would do is I would just write uh, just kind of a little article on a particular text every day. Um, I still have those. I thought about doing a devotional off of those writings. Uh, I probably will eventually one of these days just do a brief devotional, but it was called the word for the day. That's what it was called. I think it's still on Facebook somewhere. If you looked it up, it probably is still there somewhere. Uh, if I haven't, uh, if it hadn't been lost. Uh, that was years ago, man. That was back in like 2010 or something like that. <laughs> uh, it's so funny to think that 2010 was a long time ago, but anyway, uh, so yeah, and so that I guess this is kind of the outgrowth. The reason why I bring that up is because I think this ministry is kind of the outgrowth of that. Uh, what I used to do every day, writing uh, something on the Word of God, uh, a particular text. What I actually would do is I would take a word out of any particular text and I would expound upon it, uh, in terms of in light of the particular uh, text that it was found. I think I might do that again one day. But anyway, hey, Trisha, hey, hey, how you doing? <laughs> What's up, girl? I haven't seen you. Oh, my goodness. We haven't seen each other in a long time. How you doing, my sister? I'm glad to see you with us today. Listen, today we're talking or speaking from Proverbs chapter 29, verse 6 says, in the transgression of an evil man, there is a snare, but the righteous doth sing and rejoice. Today, we're talking from the subject, the way to true happiness, the way to true happiness. Let's bow our heads. Father God, thank you for your grace and mercy in your lives. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings. I praise you, God, because you're so uh, gracious towards us. You're so merciful towards us. And as we move towards 2021 and leaving out of 2020, Lord, we're, great, we're, we're grateful. We're very, very grateful, Lord, that you have kept us through. Uh, so Lord, be with us and bless us today. And please give us this day, our daily bread in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> amen. Praise the Lord. Listen, <clears throat> a lot of people say, you know, there are many ways to happiness. If you go to the bookstore right now, you go to the bookstore right now and just look up happiness, <laughs> just look up happiness, you're going to find thousands of books, how-to books, okay, self-help books, okay, that will tell you and so-called teach you and show you and reveal to you the way to true happiness, right? How you can be the happiest in your life. And most of them, most of those ways are going to be about 
the acquiring of something or the accumulation of something, the grabbing of something that you want and holding on to it, uh, being successful in your life, you know, whatever that means. Usually success means I've accumulated a bunch of things. I've got a house, I've got a car, I've got, you know, children, I've got a wife, I've got, I got, I got, I got, I got. And because of what I got, I got, I got, I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy. But how many know, no matter how much you get, no matter how much you accumulate, no matter how many times you accumulate it, these things don't really make you happy. Things do not make us happy. They don't, they don't make you happy. They don't. Even things like money. Money doesn't make you happy. As a matter of fact, too much money can become too much of a problem. Now, a lot of people don't believe that because they've never had a lot of money. And so they say, well, I just want to try it. Well, you know, maybe one day you will get a chance to try it and you'll find out that having more money brings a lot more responsibility and having more money brings a lot more power that actually reflects the character of who you are. When you have more power, your character is revealed in more a uh, clear display in your life. A lot of people don't understand that until it happens. <laughs> you know, when you're on the stage, that's when everybody can see you. But when you're not on stage, when you don't have any power, nobody can see you. And so your character doesn't matter that much or it doesn't appear to. But anyway, I digress. What is the true way to happiness? What is the true way to gain uh a certain sense of comfort, right? Joy, where can we find true joy, true happiness? Instead of just looking at a comedy series and laughing all day and then when the comedy series is over, we're back to being all in the doldrums and the depression of our lives. How can we stop being depressed? How can we start being happy? How can we start being filled with joy. Well, we're going to find that out today. The Bible says here in Proverbs 29 and verse 6, in the transgression of an evil man, there's a snare, but the righteous do sing and rejoice. You see, what most people think brings happiness, there's a snare found in it. <laughs> there's a snare in sin. You know, it, it, it's amazing. And this is especially true for Christians, I think, honestly, because Christians, generally speaking, we know what sin is. And it's, it's amazing how you grow up in the, in the Christian, you know, faith, you grow up in the church. And there's a tendency for those who are in the faith to kind of, especially when you're young, growing up, you're maturing uh, as a young person in the church, there's this tendency to believe that happiness, real happiness, real freedom is found in breaking God's law, <laughs> right? <laughs> in doing the things that we're told we're not supposed to do. Well, why are they telling us not to do it? They're telling us not to do it so that we won't be happy. We need happiness. We need joy. We need freedom. They're trying to call, they're trying to control us. That's why they're telling us not to do all these things. And so as young people, we'll get out there and we'll just do all these things that we know we're not supposed to do because we think that that's going to bring us happiness. We think that that's going to bring us joy. We party all night. Oh, we, jo oh, we drink and smoke and, you know, jump in bed with as many people as we can jump in bed with because that's going to bring us happiness. You know, we, we do all these kind of things that we know really, or rather I should say we're taught don't bring us happiness, but we believe somewhere inside of us, well, the world seems to like it, but maybe we should like it. <laughs> the world seems to be having fun at this. How come we can't have that kind of fun, right? And lo and behold, we find out, we find out it's not all it's cracked up to be. Not all it's cracked up to be. So 
here's my first point. My first point is this, those, those who transgress, those who transgress God's law, those who do evil, those who follow after a pattern of sin in their lives are actually blinded by their own sin. They're blinded by their own sin. What do you mean by that, Pastor? Here's what I mean. Sin has a tendency to blind us to the actual results of the actions that we're taking. It just has, I don't know what it is. It's something about sin that we just, it, it has this way of blinding us. You know that you shouldn't go get drunk because you know and you've seen the destruction that being drunk and drunkenness uh, does to people. But for some reason, we think sin has this tendency to blind us to all of that, right? Sin blinds us to all of that, all of the drunk driving and all of the death and destruction that's brought about by way of drunk uh, of drinking and, and, and smoking and all of these kinds of things. And it just blinds us to all that and just helps us to focus more on the good part of it, the temporary side of it. You know, temporarily, you're going to feel good. That's what sin does. And it puts you in this trap, this trap that locks you down. And the more you do it, the more blinded you are to the results of said sin. It's just, a, it's so amazing how this is. It's so amazing. It's like, can't you see what this is doing to your life? Nope, can't see it because sin blinds us. Sin blinds us and it leads us into this snare as Proverbs 29, 6 tells us. It's a trap. It's a snare. It snatches us, but it snatches us late. That's why we can't see it. You know, sin, let, can, let, let me just be honest with you. We all know sin is good. It feels good. It, it, it does. It does. If it didn't, we wouldn't do it. <laughs> if it didn't feel good initially, we wouldn't do it. We wouldn't even try it. We wouldn't even try it. But it does. It feels good. But the feeling is temporary. That's the problem. That's the problem. It's temporary. It doesn't last long. Oh, but the results last long. Oh, my goodness the destruction that happens as a result of choosing the wrong direction, that can actually last a lifetime. Notice with me Psalm 36, Psalm division 36 verses one and through two, reading from God's word version of the Bible, it says this, there is an inspired truth about the wicked person who has rebellion in the depths of his heart. He is not terrified of God. He flatters himself and he does not hate or even recognize his own guilt. Do you see what sin does? Do you see what sin does? Sin takes away your fear of God. It removes it completely. You're not even afraid of it anymore. You're not even scared of it. Matter of fact, you've got pride in what you're doing. You've got a whole lot of pride. You want everybody to know the dirt that you're involving yourself in. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with this. And it takes away the terror of God in your life. That's what sin does. It's a snare. It's a snare. It's a snapping snare. It's a trap. And watch this, verse two. The sinner flatters himself. The wicked person flatters themselves and does not hate or even recognize their own guilt. Why should I be ashamed? This is who I am. Why, why should I be ashamed of who I am? That's what sin does. And it puts you in this deep, dark chasm without you seeing. And then the next thing you know, the door is covering you. And you're in this deep, ugly hole by yourself where nobody else wants to be around you and suddenly you realize look at what I have done but it's too late or it's seemingly too late notice the verse verse two the evil wicked the the, the sinful person flatters themselves flatters themselves look at ch uh, chapter 29 in verse number five Proverbs 29 and verse number five. Look at verse five, the verse just before our verse for this morning. It says, a person who flatters his neighbor 
is spreading a net for him to step into. A person who flatters his neighbor is spreading a net for his for that person to step into. Flattering your neighbor. Who's he talking about? He's talking about you. He's talking about me. We flatter ourselves. We are our own worst neighbor. <laughs> we are our own worst neighbor. We have a tendency, and you know this is true. You and I, we both know this is true, what I'm about to say. We have an overarching, overbearing tendency to point out our, 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 our strengths and to diminish, if not completely obliterate and hide our weaknesses. Am I right or am I wrong about it? As a matter of fact, we have this overall tendency to see all of the destructive tendencies in everybody else, but in ourselves, oh no, we're perfect. <laughs> no, we're fine. We flatter ourselves. And then we go and we look for other people to flatter us the way we flatter ourselves. And it's a trap, it's a net. Some of us are used to flattery. We love flattery. We hang around people who flatter us. We don't like people who tell us the truth, who are honest with us, who rebuke us at times and who show us, listen, this direction you're going, it might not be the, the best way for you to go. We, we, we shy away from those people, but we linger and we hang around and we spend a whole lot of time with people who are gassing us up. You know, we love to gaslight ourselves. We love to flatter ourselves. And the Bible says, Solomon says, you're setting a trap. You're setting a net for yourself. And eventually that net is going to be scooped up. It's going to have you in it. Lord have mercy. We're our own worst gasser, our own worst enemy. Notice with me, Proverbs chapter 4 and verse number 19. Proverbs 4 and verse number 19 says, the way of wicked people is like deep darkness. They do not know what makes them stumble. You see, here's the problem with a person who sins on a consistent, continual basis as a matter of fact in their lives. A person who sins as a matter of fact in their lives, they stumble and then they don't even know why they're stumbling. You know, the worst thing, the worst thing in life is to fail and have no idea why you're failing. Why? Because you're subject to do it over and over and over again. What do they say? The definition of insanity is to do the same thing, expecting a different result. That's what sin is. That's exactly what sin is. Sin is literally insanity. We think that we can continue to live the way we've been living and somehow righteousness is just going to flow in our lives. No. <laughs> somehow we're just going to be happy, even though we're living lives that are destroying us from the inside out. Isn't it something? It's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing how sin blinds us. Notice with me Proverbs chapter 28 and verse number 14. Proverbs chapter 28 and verse number 14. Blessed is the one who is always fearful of sin. This is God's word version of the Bible. But whoever is hard hearted falls into disaster. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you can't make it any clearer than that. Solomon is so clear on this, so clear. Happy, that's what blessed means. Blessed in the Bible usually means happy. The Greek word makarias in the Greek, it means to be satisfied, to be truly happy from the inside out. Blessed is the one, happy is the one, satisfied is the one who is always fearful of sin. Now, a lot of people think, well, we shouldn't live in fear. We shouldn't live, we shouldn't be afraid of sin. We shouldn't uh, be afraid of anything. But the person who is warned of sin and takes that warning seriously, that person is actually happy. That's what the Bible says. That person is actually happy. 
because that fear will drive you to the Lord. That fear will drive you to trust in the Lord, not in yourself, but in the Lord. Somebody say amen. But whoever is hard-hearted falls into disaster. What do you mean hard-hearted? Pastor, what does that mean? It means to reject your fears against doing what you know you ought not do. Now, hear me, hear me quickly. Hear me, hear me on this. It's important that we respond <laughs> to the natural fear that God has put in us against sin, against doing wrong, against doing evil. Because the more that we ignore that natural fear that God has placed in us of doing wrong, the more doing wrong feels like doing right. Boy, listen, listen. <laughs> you, oh my goodness. So many people, so many people have gotten caught up in what I'm talking about, this trap, this snare that's set by sin to ignore their natural fear of doing wrong and to embrace doing wrong. And suddenly everything they do that's wrong in their own minds is right. Everybody else sees it as wrong because it is wrong, but you don't see it because you have seared your mind. You have hardened your heart to the true fear of the Lord. And that is, listen, that is the worst state that you can be in is to actually think you're doing right when you're actually doing the worst wrong. Mm -hmm. Lord have mercy. That's the trick of sin. But righteous people live holy lives. They carefully live in obedience to God's commands and they tremble before the word of God. They humble themselves before the word of God. They acknowledge their failures and the mercy of the heavenly father restores them when they make mistakes. Somebody say amen. His conscience is pure, those who truly trust in the Lord, and they're confident in God. They have no fear, they have no guilt, and they do not live in shame at all. They sleep well at night, and they're gloriously content. Their soul is filled with pleasure and a great hope for the future. They sing with a satisfying joy from the heart that flows from God's love. They enjoy every aspect of life because they see in life the things that they can be grateful for. They're grateful for everything in life. They don't just wait until something huge and miraculous happens. No, they're grateful for the little things. Are you grateful for the little things in life? Are you grateful for the small blessings that we often take for granted in life? Are you grateful for life itself? If not, you need to check your happiness level. So, what's the best way to happiness? What's the best way to true happiness? My second point and last point today is this. The fruit of godliness is true pleasure. The fruit of godliness is true pleasure in your life. Notice with me, God's word version of the Bible, 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse number 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse number 6 says this, a godly life, God's word version of the Bible, a godly life brings huge profits to people who are content with what they have. A godly life brings great profit to those who are content with what they have. You see, God has a way of making, of causing you to feel 
to, to be filled with joy, even in the things that you already have. That, that is true happiness. Because when you have the Lord, you have everything. You've got everything you need. You've got everything you need. You don't need more money. You don't need more houses. You don't need more lands. You don't need it to, you know, another job, another this, another that, another so on, so another this. You don't need, no, you've got God on your side. And God is everything. He's everything. Come on, say amen. Notice with me, Psalm division 144, verse 15. Psalm division 144. Verse 15, God's word version of the Bible again says this, blessed are the people, happy are the people who have these blessings from God. Blessed, that is happy are they, those whose God is the Lord. Is the Lord your God? I'm talking about Jehovah God, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Rapha. Jehovah Shiloh, the God of peace. Is Jehovah your God? Is he your Lord? Is he Lord meaning owner? Does God own you? Are you a servant of the most high God? Because if you are a servant of the most high God, you'll be happy. You will be happy. You won't be chasing after this diversion and chasing after that lustful thing and chasing down and running after this and that and the other thing, that distraction. Why? Because you're satisfied. You're satisfied with him. And whatever he allows to bring your way, you'll take advantage of it. You'll be blessed by it. And you will use it to bless others. Because that's who God is to you. Notice with me Proverbs 3 and verse number 13. From This is from the modern King James Version of the Bible. Proverbs chapter 13, uh, Proverbs 3 and verse 13, I'm sorry. Proverbs chapter three and verse number 13 says this, blessed is the man who finds wisdom. Happy is the man who finds the wisdom of God and the man who gets understanding. Drop down to verse 18. Proverbs three and verse 18 says, she, that is the wisdom of God, she is a tree of life to those who lay hold upon her. And happy is everyone who keeps her close. That's the wisdom of God. That's what we've been talking about over these last few months in the book of Proverbs. We've been talking about the wisdom of God. And the wisdom of God today is that things will never satisfy you, that leaving God and rejecting the word of God and living life according to your pleasures and your lusts and your uh, direction in your way is not going to satisfy you. It's not going to satisfy you. I don't care how much money you get. I don't care how many women you got in your harem. I don't care how many men you go and enjoin yourself to. I don't care. It doesn't matter. It's not going to give you true happiness because ladies and gentlemen, we are built. We are built to have God in our lives. There's a God hole inside of us that has to be filled by him and him alone. Nobody can fill that hole, that, that empty vacuum inside of us created by God. You were created for his glory, the Bible says. You were created to be bound and connected to him. And it's never going to be satisfied when you're constantly separating yourself from him. It's not going to work. I don't care how many people you enjoy yourself to. I don't care how many people you sleep with. I don't care how many people you love in your life. It's not going to be enough because there's a God vacuum inside you that can only be truly satisfied and filled by a relationship with him. That's the only way. You need a relationship with somebody who's greater than you, who's better than you, amen. And no human being is better than you because all human beings are frail, faulty, sinful, and jacked up from the inside out. 
Are y'all with me today? I don't care how much they appear to be better than you, how much more money they have than you, because that's the thing. We think, oh, if we could just connect to these people that are so much better than us. I mean, look, they're so much more, more talented than me are than I am. But certainly, certainly if I connect myself to them, I'll be satisfied. No, no, you're gonna find out they're just as jacked up as you. They crazier than you. <laughs> You're going to find out that they need God just as much, if not more than you do. We all need God. You can't fill it with things and people and places and persons and resources. And it's not, it's not going to work. Money and fame and fortune, these things are not going to suffice. Only one thing can satisfy that God hole in you, and that's God himself. That hole is shaped and, and, and molded into the shape of God. And <laughs> nobody else can fill it. Come on, say amen. The wisdom of God, it is the tree of life. Do you, we understand this truth today? Have you seen troubled and painful lives? Have you seen trouble and pain in your own life? Have you been troubled? yourself, it might be your own fault because you may be trying to satisfy yourself with things outside of God and his will for your life. When we choose to break God's laws and break God's word and break our relationship with God, the snare of sin comes and snatches us and lays hold to our ankles and won't let us go. The snare of sin it just has this way of enamoring us to its prettiness, its lustfulness, its allurements. But in the end, it sinks us. There's a snare in every sin. I want to say that again. There's a snare in every sin. You may not see it immediately. You may not recognize it. But ladies and gentlemen, the trap has been set. And it will catch you. Unless we acknowledge and repent and forsake it and restore our relationship with the master of the universe, with God himself. Stop chasing after sin and start chasing after God. Come on, say amen today. Notice with me, last verse is from the modern King James Version of the Bible. It's in Proverbs chapter 11 and verse number six. Here's what Solomon says. The king tells us from the word of God. Here's what King Solomon tells his sons and daughters. In other words, here's what he's telling us by way of the wisdom that God imparted to him. Here's what he says. The righteousness of the upright, Proverbs 11, 6. The righteousness of the upright shall deliver them. But deceivers will be taken in their own deception. Don't deceive yourself into thinking that sin is going to be a profit to you. It will be your downfall. Oh, but if you follow the will of God, if you seek God on a daily basis, if, if, if you participate in PTPOG every day, practicing the presence of God every day, you will be delivered <laughs> from any snare, from any trap, and you truly will find true happiness. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your blessings. We thank you, God, for your word today. And we pray and ask, I pray and ask that you would bless each and every soul under the sound of my voice right now, that God, you would deliver us from our deceptive lives, our own deceptions, our own pride, our own sense of flattering ourselves. Lord, set us free from the snares that sin lays out for us and deliver us 
to a life that's filled with the joy of the Lord. That is our strength. We thank you, God, and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hey, listen, God be with you. God bless you. I pray that this has been a blessing to you. If it has, please like it and share it on your Facebook page. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to our Facebook channel here on Facebook, our Facebook group. Just type in right now, go right now to your search engine, click inside your search engine on your Facebook app, type in hashtag PTPOG, practicing the presence of God. It will pull up a purple icon, much like the one you see behind me. When you click on it, please go ahead and join. We'd love to have you be a part of our family. And those of you who happen to be watching us by way of our YouTube channel, Yes, we've got a new YouTube channel. For those of you who don't know, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Consider subscribing. We'd love to have you. And also, if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, leave a comment down below. I really would love to hear from you so very, very much. And I will respond. Thank you so much. God be with you. I love you with the love of the Lord. Take care, guys. Have a great day in the Lord. Be blessed. Be empowered be invigorated with the spirit and the blessings and the word of God. And always remember, don't ever forget. P-T-P-O-G. Practice the presence of God in your daily life. I promise you, God promises you, he will always keep you satisfied in him. Take care, guys. Love you with the love of the Lord. Peace.